my game set up here. Almost done. My name is Jason Rohr, and I'm an independent game developer. I have sort of a very different take on games from what the mainstream industry is doing, what all this stuff around here is doing, all the, the sort of glamorous, uh, high-polished 3D graphics and, and visual splendor and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm really focusing on games that, uh, at the core, are about interactivity. My training is in physics, but then somehow I got involved in games and I worked for Atari for some years and then I went to Atari Collapse and I became a freelance designer and I did a bunch of games then. When I was at Atari, I realized that games had a fundamental flaw, and that is that they were about things rather than people. Let me tell you about my dream. I dreamed of the day when computer games would be a viable medium of artistic expression, an art form. I dreamed of computer games encompassing the broad range of human experience and emotion. 17 years ago, I decided, if this is going to happen, I, I'm going to have to do it myself. And so uh, I figured, you know, I'm smart. It might take me, geez, two years, maybe three. Well, that was 17 years ago. So, uh, uh, but we just actually launched yesterday. Come, dragon, I will fight you. Sancho Panza, my sword. He founded this conference um, 20 or 25 years ago, but after he's left, he's been very critical of the whole enterprise of, of the game industry and so on, and very critical of this event, and even very critical of the Independent Game Festival and the kinds of games that are on display here. I really want to learn about his use of spatial metaphor. It's an interesting inversion. The problem with artistic expression in games is that the games are fundamentally spatial, and the means of expression available to the player are very limited. Well, the one thing I'm really nervous about is actually showing Chris some of my games. Um, because, you know, as I got my start as a game developer, I was reading his books and he was sort of this game design hero, uh, almost like a teacher at a distance for me. And so now it almost feels like I'm preparing for the oral exam finally after all these years. I'm Jason. What's the weather like up there? <laughs> it's a little bit colder, a little less oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pleased to meet you, yes, Jason. Yes, yes. Fortunately, so. there's not very many games here to look at, um, but I do have mine set up. Yeah, uh, let's look which at is, it. Which is the weird two-player game about consciousness and isolation. Yeah, that's the one I couldn't, couldn't look at earlier. So. <laughs> right, it requires two players, and um, we're, we're not supposed to look at each other's screens. Yeah. And our interaction with each other is very um, indirect. OK. So we can, we can touch any key to begin, and then if you hit the space bar, you can create blocks and add them to the world. Okay. And then if you walk around a little bit to the far left and far right, there's some other things that are explained, other, uh, two other actions that you can do. 
I love the retro graphics. <laughs> it's so... Uh... There's, a, there's a whole school of us kind of doing this kind of stuff now. Um, I guess part of it is to take the focus off of the graphics and yeah. to make people say, well, I'm not here for the visual spectacle. Yeah. What am I here for? I'm here to think about what I'm doing and why the designer created this particular set of interactions and what they might mean, you know. And, uh, and there's the, this little keyboard hints about two other actions you can take. Sleep, oh, sleeping okay. and waking up. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's a bit of confusion in this game about which, which, you know, which, which of these things is actually the real world. We don't really know. Oh, okay. I, I like the idea of a rule book that just explains everything and then the expression is in the emergence. There, there is... I mean, because your games used to have these big, thick rule books, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Or uh, explanations of how to play. Yeah. You don't and... sit down to balance of power and just play. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, that's one of the killer problems. In the old days, we were so limited that there really was a choice, a, a simple trade-off between if you want richness, you got to have a big manual. Right. And if you want to have a small manual, you got to keep it simple. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about your style, is that uh, you got the richness without the manual. It's a very sort of narrow channel that I'm exploring, right? I, I don't, it doesn't have all sorts of, it's not, it doesn't have the sort of complexity and multifaceted, multi it's like one facet. Like Passage, for example, explores essentially one idea, yeah. which is one little nuanced feeling of coming face to face with your own mortality. Passage is also a game about realizations. And the realization, it seems obvious. Oh, there's the spouse. I wonder what she does. Oh, it's pretty. I picked up this heart. You know, this heart blooms around you. And yeah. wasn't that lovely? But then you have this realization about what the trade-off was. Oh, I can't get down in the maze anymore quite as easily. Yeah. And so I don't want to just put that in the manual. What is, I think, most important about your approach is that you're taking the idea of spatial navigation, which has always been done too damned literally. Right. And suddenly turning it into metaphor right and then exploring well what kind of metaphors can be created with with spatial uh systems how far do you think it can be pushed well i mean you, i think the biggest complaint about these all these other games that are spatial it's not necessarily that they're spatial but that there's their goal is to simulate reality yeah. that's their bread and butter and anything that doesn't fit into that anything that breaks that illusion of reality is excluded from possible fodder for game design. Mm. If, I mean, think of a game like Pac-Man as a, just an abstract example. Um, this game is a game where you're running around in a maze, but you can still see everything in the maze, even though you're supposedly behind walls and so on. When you pick up a power pellet, or whatever you call it, I don't know what it's really called, where the ghosts get scared, um, all of the ghosts simultaneously realize that you've done this, even though they're way across the maze from you. Spooky action at a distance that violates yeah. Yeah. relativity, right? Yeah. Um, but because it's so abstract and symbolic, we have no problem accepting that. We don't ever question why they know, they just know. It's a yeah, symbolic, yeah. iconic system. But when you get into simulating reality and try to make Pac-Man in 3D, you pick up this pellet and the ghosts are way over there, you can't even see them. How, yeah, how did they know yeah. I just ate this and why yeah. are they scared? You have to have yeah. lightning bolts travel across to yeah. them or something. So the question is, is there really enough expressiveness in moving around a, a, an image is there enough there for you to, to say interesting things with? I mean, it's like, suppose I gave you a language with only 50 words. Right. Could you really write good poetry with it? I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm definitely worried about it. <laughs> I, you know, I made nine or so games in the past year, and, you know, kind of exploring this idea as far as I could. Yeah. And I sort of feel like I, I may have hit the limitations.